Hey lovelies, you're welcome to another mind-blowing video. I present to you a chew and yellow soup, a Cameroonian delicacy from the northwest and west regions of Cameroon. This meal is just so unique. You will find Eru in Nigeria as Afang. You will find Dole in many countries with different names for bitter leaf soup. You will find Ekwang in Nigeria as Ekpang Kuko. But you see a chew and yellow soup, it is uniquely Cameroonian. And that makes this meal so, so special. Stay tuned. Let me show you how a typical Akum woman prepares a chew and yellow soup. To prepare a chew the traditional way, you need a variety of cocoa yams. On these three heaps are three varieties of cocoa yams. This is what we locally call makabo. The young, the baby makabo. And this is what we call the mami makabo. That is the mother, the mother of the makabo. And here we have the colocasia, locally known as Ibo cocoyams. Guys, if you know the real names or the scientific names of these cocoyams, please leave it down in the comment section. And we equally need what we call achu banana, the ones with the very short fingers, because it is very soft and good for. A chew. So I went ahead to wash the cocoa yams and I shared them into two. I reserved the smaller ones apart and then the bigger ones, I arranged them in the pot. And then I went ahead to peel the baby macabos and I proceeded to grate. As you know, macabo is the most difficult cocoa yam to pound. So grating it reduces the stress of pounding and it magically increases the quantity of your achu. Try this and you will come here to give me a review. So after grating, we set that aside and we proceed to make our fire. It's a traditional meal, right? So we are using a traditional method of cooking. So we go ahead to light our charcoal and then we go ahead to warm the leaves. These are the leaves we are going to use to wrap up our grated Cocoa yams. So we proceed to add a little oil in the cocoa yams and we equally add in some water. The oil will help the cocoa yams not to stick on the leaves after cooking. And then we add in enough water to soften the cocoa yams since makabo is so so hard. So we add in water and then we beat very well. And then let's proceed to place our pot on the fire. So we place our pot of large cocoa yams on the fire and then we add in enough water to cook. So at this point, we proceed to wrap up our grated cocoa yams just as you can see. So you can use what? Ever method is comfortable for you to wrap but I prefer this method because it flattens the cocoa yams making it easier for it to cook within a shorter period of time so we keep wrapping till we are able to wrap all the cocoa yams and in total we had three bundles of our grated cocoa yam wrapped in leaves so once we're done wrapping we will cover the pot and cook for about 20 to 30 minutes before we add in our achu bananas and the smaller size cocoa yams. So we proceed to wash our bananas while waiting for our cocoa yams to cook to a certain extent. This is just because they don't have the same cooking time. A large cocoa yam will cook longer than a small cocoa yam and bananas as well don't cook for so long if you overcook the bananas they turn red and might affect the color of your achu so i actually boil the larger cocoa yams and the grated cocoa yams for about 30 minutes and then i added in the bananas and the smaller size cocoa yams please kindly give this video a like that is so important to me thank you so at this point we are going to cover and cook till it's ready. That can take another 20 to 25 minutes. And our achu is ready and it's time for us to start pounding. I will start by pounding the small size cocoa yams. You can follow any other bird. The other I am following is the most convenient. I guess you don't like achu with lumps inside or achu with schoolboys inside. This method will prevent all that. 
and here is our mortar to use for pounding and our pistol. So we start by peeling our cocoa yams and adding into the mortar. It is so convenient to do this meal when you're two of you in the house. One person peels and the other pounds. And take note that you have to pound the cocoa yam as it is still hot because the moment it gets cold, you will not find it easy pounding the cocoa yams. So we pound and once it's smooth, we remove and set aside. So we keep pounding till we are able to pound all the small size cocoa yams. If it's your first time stopping by here, you're most welcome. Hit the subscribe button to join this beautiful family. So once we are done pounding the smaller cocoa yams, we proceed to pound the bananas. So if you are not versed with handling hot things, make sure you keep dipping your hands in water. So this is how we peel the bananas. For bananas, it is always advisable to peel all before you start pounding. So at this point, I had to stop pounding and join my assistant for us to peel the bananas faster because if you joke with bananas, you have spoiled your achoo. So I keep compressing so that they don't get cool till we are able to peel all the bananas. And once we're done peeling, you go in and start pounding. A gentle reminder for you to give this video a like. Don't you think this Cameroonian delicacy deserves thumbs up? Smash the like button to support this video. Thank you. So we keep pounding till the bananas are very, very smooth. And once that is done, we proceed to take out our grated cocoa yams. Guys, it's very hot, so you need to handle with care. So we proceed to open and then you gently fold into two to release the cocoa yam from the leaf. So you lift it up and you fold just as you can see on the video and then you add it into the pounded bananas. So as you can see, it is very easy to take out the grated cocoa yam from the leaf because we added a little bit of oil before wrapping up. That is the use of the oil added, just about a tablespoon of oil. So at this point, we are going to give this a very good mix. If you've watched up to this point, I want to take this time to appreciate you. Keep watching and I assure you, you will not regret your time. Immediately after pounding, we are going to go ahead to prepare our yellow soup. So we mix until the grated cocoa yams or the kwa cocoa is well blended with the bananas. So at this point, you remember the small size cocoa yams we pounded at the beginning? You add it in and then you proceed to give it a good mix as well. This is real sports, right? Yes, you need enough energy to be able to pound your achu and pound it well. So we give that a good mix and then we take it out of the mortar and reserve a site and then we proceed to pound the remaining cocoa yams in the pot. So at this point, we are done pounding the remaining cocoa yams and it's time to mix everything together. So we add in everything in the mortar and then once more, we give it the last good mix. And after mixing, it's time to add in some water. So you add in water according to your taste. So we add in water and we mix, mix, mix and mix. So, achu is all about pounding and mixing. And once we are done mixing, our achu is ready. Let me proceed to show you how achu is wrapped traditionally in leaves. So you grab whatever quantity you want to wrap, place on the leaf, and then you gently fold the two sides of the leaf. 
watch that keenly so after folding you go ahead to close up the edges just as you can see just a gentle press and you close up the edges so you need to warm your leaves well to be able to wrap up your achu like this and once it's wrapped with leaves you can preserve it for about two or three days let's do it one more time And that is it. See how easy it is to wrap achu in leaves. But if you don't have leaves, just go ahead to store your achu in a bowl. And you level the top and compress it well. Level with a spoon and make it look a bit attractive. And that is it. Our achu is ready. Let us proceed to prepare a chew soup known as yellow soup. And to prepare that, our proteins of choice are beef and cow skin. So I went ahead to wash and cut the meat into bite sizes and then I added in enough water. We need enough water to make a chew soup. I seasoned with some seasoning cubes and some salt. These are the only two things we use to season meat for a chew soup this is equally our cow skin clean and sliced it is equally well cooked so we proceed to fortify our fire by adding in some more charcoal and then we place our pot of meat on the fire once our meat is about 90 percent cooked we add in some hot peppers and then we add in our cow skin so that it absorbs some of the salt and seasoning cubes we cover and cook for about five to ten more minutes and once our meat is ready we take it off the fire and then we proceed to heat up our palm oil i will leave a detailed list of all ingredients used and quantities in the description box below be sure to check that out so we take out the stock or the juice from our meat and transfer into another pot that is where we are making the soup and then we set aside our beef and cow skin so we let the stock to cool down a bit and then once our oil is heated up we add it into our meat stock and then it's time to come in with the most important ingredient, which is our potash. This is potash, a liquid made from burnt plantain or banana peelings. You can choose to use limestone or bicarbonate of soda. So there is no exact amount of potash that you add in. So you add in bit by bit, you mix and you taste so just the foam on top of the soup tells you that the potash you have added is okay otherwise you have to taste so after mixing very well you go ahead to taste and to taste a true soup we use the middle of our palm as you can see that is the traditional way of tasting a true soup so i tested at this point and our potash is okay so we mix again and then we proceed to add in some seasoning cubes as well as some salt and we proceed to mix again this is just the traditional way of mixing a chew soup by carrying some with a bowl and you gently pour into the rest of the mixture by so doing everything mixes well otherwise you can easily just add in all these ingredients in a blender and you blend that is so easy but today we are preparing a chew and yellow soup the traditional way and here comes our achu spices achu spice is a combination of many ethnic spices like rondels calabash nutmeg bush pepper and so on and they have been roasted and ground into i'll leave a list in the description box if you are in the diaspora Feel free to ask for a chew spice in any African store and be sure to get it there. So we mix till the achu spices are well dissolved and we proceed to taste. I actually tasted and adjusted with a little bit of salt and that is okay. As simple as that, our achu soup is ready. It's time for us to serve and enjoy. 
And I'll be showing you how to serve a chew traditionally. You open the leaf gently and then you drop the achu on the plate. You gently apply some pressure to release the leaf. And then you go ahead to bore the achu with your fingers. That is, you gently create a well in the middle where our soup will be added. Just watch keenly. This is so easy to do. You gently create a well in the middle. And that is it. As simple as that, we have finished boring our achu. Let us proceed to add in our achu soup or yellow soup. So you pour it in the middle, whatsoever quantity you want. And then we proceed to add in our aquatics. And what is achu without vegetables? Hmm? Achu is always accompanied by some vegetables. And most importantly, boiled fresh peppers, hot peppers, to add some spiciness to the soup. And our chu is ready to be devoured. Guys, feel free to use whatsoever proteins of choice. I use beef and cow skin. You can use any other protein of your choice. Join me. Let us eat this delicious achu. Oh, yes round the world and back to the center and to add some more spiciness we press a little more peppers so we start eating our chew from the outer section coming inward guys this meal is super delicious i can't stay for up to a week without eating a chew it feels like something is absent in my system it's so so delicious and cow skin is super delicious to accompany your a chew if you have watched up to this extent, I want to take this opportunity to give you a special thanks. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Please kindly give this video a like and why not leave me a beautiful comment in the comments section. What is your impression about this meal? Let me know in the comments section. And if it's your first time stopping by here, Please hit the subscribe button to join this amazing community where we share beautiful recipes, DIYs, and health tips as well. We have come to the end of this video. Please do well to give this meal a try and come back here to give us a review. Click on the video that appears on your screen to watch another amazing traditional meal recipe. Thank you so much. Stay blessed and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.